So I'll show you one more time. Prepare to position for the transition, and the transition should take care of itself. So here we go. I get him walking. I get him moving along. And he, he brought his ears back there. I'm going to ask him to walk a little faster. Right here, I'm at the edge. So now it's real easy to just sit up and go. And he goes, oh, good. He almost thinks it's his idea. That's real nice right there. So I think he's been pretty revved up up until about now, ever since I brought him. Um, I had something happen yesterday. It was a really good learning experience. And I got a good laugh out of it, and so did a lot of people. Um, but I was out in the parking lot there, and the wind was blowing. And there's those orange barricades with the rope across. And I was leading them through the little doorway there. And all of a sudden, the wind blew, and the barricade and the rope came right at us. And it was at its tail. And remember how I said, chase the danger, you know? Well, it was at its tail. So what I did is I kind of quick stepped to the left, so he had to bend a little bit, and then I just took my leg and I just blocked, I just kind of blocked that barricade. And he'd been pretty nervous at that point, but I blocked that barricade, and then I started pushing the barricade with my knee and made my horse follow that barricade, and I set it right back up. And my horse looked at me like, oh, thanks, Jack. <laughs> so I blocked that barricade, I offset the haunch, I chased the danger and I led him forward. Now, I'm not trying to brag on myself. I was, my horse, he, he liked me at that point. He's like, maybe you're not so bad after all, right? Um, but had I not thought about what was going on, and I mean, I do a lot with young horses, and I've had dogs come at me and with horses, and I know what to do. You chase it, you face it. You don't let that dog get to your horse's heels ever, right? If a, do if a wild dog finds you on the trail, you don't, you don't let it get behind you. You, you, t you face it. And that dog, that dog sees a horse and goes, it's, all of a sudden it thinks, thinks otherwise. But it was interesting because what would happen with a lot of folks is they would have had this happen, their horse coiled up, and he jumped forward, and what the first thing they might do would be is to just grab them here and say, whoa, whoa, but all they're doing is balling that horse up. So being able to turn and bend and offset that haunch is a, is a big deal. I did this in the last demo. I forgot the mounting block. Would someone mind bringing me that mounting block? Sorry about that. You're all comfy sitting down. I'll put you to work. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Oh, wherever. That's all good. Very nice. Thanks a lot. All right. And there isn't a time where I wouldn't have my eyes up and my chin up aware of my horse. I wouldn't want to turn my head to where I couldn't see him. Now, right now, I can't see him. Right now, I can see him. So, I call that leading blind. I wouldn't want to lead blind. And the thing about it is this. If we're trying to connect to the horse and we need to observe what's taking place, how important is reading their eyes and ears and mouth and, and expression? It's very important. If I'm not looking, or if I'm not aware of my horse's face, ears, eyes, well, I'm not really reading his thoughts, so I'm not connected at all. And so when you're working with the horse, if you're watching their face, you're watching their expression and you're reading their thoughts. You are. Just like I watch people and I say something and I think to myself, do they think I'm crazy? Am I making sense? Do they think I'm full of it? Do they, do they get it? Well, same with a horse. So look now, when we're riding, you shouldn't be looking down at your horse. You should be looking up. And we call that soft eyes. And soft eyes would be opening up your vision. You should try it while you're sitting there now. Open up your field of view as wide as you can this way and as wide as you can this way. And I always use the, the analogy, you're driving down the freeway with a horse trailer and you're looking out the windshield, but you can see your side mir mirrors and the rear view mirror at the same time. You know what I mean, right? But you're not looking right at those mirrors. You can just, you can tell, oh, somebody's, like in the rear view, somebody's coming up behind me, and then you might look at that mirror. Well, that's soft eyes. When people ride, they have hard eyes. And they generally look at the horse's head. And your horse won't change color, so you might as well not look right at their head, Right? 
The other thing about it is this. Chase the danger. Face your fear. The horse. I'm the brains and he's the feet. Right? At least, and I should be the eyes of the horse when I'm on him and when I'm on the ground. You should be the eyes when you're on your trail horse or your show horse or your cow working horse. What I mean by that is if I see something coming first before my horse sees it, well, I could direct his attention and say, do you see that coming? Look at that. And so I direct him to it. And my horse goes, thanks for showing me. And so instead of that horse spooking and getting unclear, you chased the danger, faced the danger, you took a leadership role, you directed that horse, you became the eyes and the brain. So horses have this innate, uh, it's just in there. Somebody's got to run the show. It's either you or the horse. But you don't have to get mean or mad or pushy. But someone's got to be the brains. And generally speaking, the horse wants the human. They really do want, they don't want to necessarily be the leader. It seems that way sometimes. But So we, we look for things. So if there's people walking, you know, or something like, yesterday it was cool because the carriage horses came in. And so all of a sudden I had like a little ADD break and I go, I'm going over there and chasing the danger. And so you show the horse what could scare him, right? So a dog comes running in and, and what I would do is I would say turn and I would say face that dog, get your head down, look at that. And then I would walk up to it and I would chase the danger, face the danger. All right. So as we ride here, I want you to think back to the groundwork that we did. And I want you to think about the active indicators that I used to bring his life up and his motion up or down. So remember that. So what I did, if you think about it, I sat tall, I led ahead. Remember when I picked up the rope? Well, now picking up the rope is me following my hands. This is still leading. This is still leading. So I'm sitting up. I'm using my eyes. I still can check in. I can see my horse. I can see you all. I can see where I'm going. This is leading. My, instead of my legs moving on the ground I was walking, well, right now my hips are moving. Now think about it. If I had to, I could wiggle my legs. See that, how I did that? And then it would be very much like when you were on the ground. Move your legs faster and walk faster. Get, get the horse moving. Move your legs slower. Relax your body. Remember how on the ground I kind of settled? We'll settle. It's the same. It's the same thing. So good groundwork correlates to riding for your horse. He can scratch because I gave him a long rein. He can scratch now if he wants to. So that's pretty important to think about, that good groundwork correlates with riding. Now remember the backup. I turned towards him and I lifted. Well, I lift. It's similar, lifting. And then remember, I talked about my, my chest and which way my chest is facing, shining that light. So if I sit up and now I shine my light right, he follows that. He, they even know where you're looking when you're riding. They know where you're looking. They, they really do. And so we follow that. He follows my focus. He follows my eyes around. So that communication was very much established on the ground. Then there was the flag and me arcing around. Well, here, maybe I draw his attention left. I wiggle my left leg, see his left ear come back, and I might just sort of squeeze that left rein a, a little bit. And then here it is, my left leg... I'm just wiggling my left leg. Well, that's a lot like that flag coming around, and he's used to facing that flag on that side. If somebody walked up behind you and they tapped on your right shoulder, you'd look to the right generally, right? So the flag taught him when it comes around your right, arc, cross the hind legs, and face it. That can, save, that can seriously save your life, crossing those hind legs and facing the scary thing. So we teach that. And we, we teach it on the ground and we teach that riding. That's looking real nice. So we're walking and we're flowing. Another thing I did on the ground is I really sat up and I was moving them out. And so here it is here. And so 
you know, sometimes people see, they can see what I'm doing, and other people, I don't see what you're doing. So I've, seen, I've, I've heard both. But it's, it's the same idea. On the ground, I moved and I lifted. I lifted my sternum, and that does matter. And you kind of feel silly at first. You kind of feel like, I feel snooty, you know, uppity, but you're not. The idea is this. I lift my sternum and I sit up. If that doesn't work, I go to my leg, and I did it there and then I bring them back. And then lift my sternum, sit up, go to my leg, and then bring them back. Life back down. That took a little longer to get his life down there. I think he sees those banners, see? Ready? Up. I'm not dropping sternum down. I'm not dropping chin down. If you do this, you're going to be in a lot of trouble because not only do you not see what's taking place around you, you're crashing the horse's front end. So we want to sit up, we want to lift the sternum, we want to elevate, and we want to lift. And I'll even get that walk rolling faster. So like right now, now he's, he's, he's I'm going to give him a break because he's really feeling for me right there. Um, but what I'll do is I'll accelerate the walk, and that's called the tempo, the speed. Just like in music, tempo is speed. So I'll accelerate the tempo more, 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 I'll get his engine revved up. I'll even shorten the rein a little bit, and pretty soon it doesn't feel, like, feel right to walk. So I just sit up and I trot. And then when I want to walk, what I do is the opposite. I slow the trot, I sit down, his ears come back, and we, we'll walk. So I'm preparing it. So if he's going really fast at the walk, his engine is really kind of revved, he starts to bring his ears back on me. You can see him. You can see those ears articulate. And he looks back at me and he goes, Jack, should I trot? And I answer that question by either sitting up to trot or just walking by swinging my hips back to front. You can see this motion. So I'll show you one more time. Prepare to position for the transition and the transition should take care of itself. So here we go. I get him walking. I get him moving along. And he, he brought his ears back there. I'm going to ask him to walk a little faster. Right here, I'm at the edge. So now it's real easy to just sit up and go. And he goes, oh, good. He almost thinks it's his idea. And I do this.